I know we may be stuck right in the frigid winter, but spring is just around the corner, so I have a fun daisy wall hanging for you. Sometimes you just need a quick and simple project to keep your sewing inspiration going and that is what this little wall hanging was for me. I have wanted to play around with the Dresden a bit more and my husband had the idea of using half the petals in background colors to really make it look like a whimsical daisy and I love how it turned out. So let me tell you what you're going to need to make this. I used this Floridora uh, by Jen Hewitt for Ruby Star Society. This is such a fun collection. And of course this is five inch squares. I used that to make all the leaves that you see here. And I actually ended up piecing the back. And so if you decide to do a pieced back, you will need two charm packs in order to have enough to do that. But otherwise, one charm pack is enough that you could actually make all of your Dresden blades, your centers, and your leaves out of that if you wanted to. But as you can see, I use some accent fabric. So you'll need a quarter yard or a fat quarter of the yellow for your centers, as well as the white for the petals. I also uh, mixed it up and used this blue for my background. You need a yard of background fabric, whatever you decide. And then you'll need some of our Missouri Star Lightweight Fusible, which I have here on the roll. And I used some craft text, which if you're not familiar with, it's just kind of this, I don't even know how to describe it, like almost leather-like paper that you can totally sew through. It's an amazing product. And I knew that I was going to be quilting this myself and I wanted that extra texture. So you can see, I used that for the stem. If you don't have this, you could totally just fold some fabric over and use fabric for the stem. You could grab some ribbon. I had this ribbon in my stash that I thought would have worked great as well. But just use your imagination and have fun with it. Beyond the fabric, you're also going to need your Dresden template and the small orange peel template, which I have here. So let's dive right into this. So to begin, we are going to cut a five inch strip by the width of our fabric of our background and our accent uh, color. So this is what we're going to be using to make our petals. And I'm just gonna go ahead and open this up and we are going to cut some of our Dresdens. You could absolutely cut this on the fold if you wanted. As you can see, it measures five inches. And so now we're just gonna use our rotary cutter and I will make a cut this way, move this out of the way and rotate back and forth down my strip. For each Dresden blade, Dresden plate I should say, you need 10 of each color. So I'll just keep making my way across. To make both of the daisies, you need 20 of each color. Okay, now I have a few already cut, so I'm just gonna cut that many for now and I'm gonna do the same out of our white. This time I'll leave this folded so you can see. Actually, I'm going to turn this around to make my first cut because I'm right-handed. I don't want to do anything dangerous. So we will just slice off this little bit here. And now I can flip it around again. Line this up. Since I have it folded twice, that way gives me four at a time and I'm comfortable cutting that many layers. So now let's move this out of the way and let's actually sew our Dresdens. So if you're not familiar with uh, making Dresden blades, this is pretty amazing because all you're going to do is along this short straight end at the top, not the shortest I should say, but this top side, we're just gonna fold this in half and we're gonna sew straight across here. And so I'm gonna take my stack here and I'm gonna chain piece these through the machine one after the other. So we'll come over here and I just make sure they're folded right in half and then one after the other into the machine. These are so gratifying to make and I think you're really going to enjoy them. There we go. And now we'll move to our blue. 
The thing that was surprising for me about Dresden's is I just imagined them to be so difficult and so time consuming. And then once I actually got started, they're really not any more time consuming than anything else we do in quilting. It's just part of the process, right? And it's just about enjoying it. All right, last one for now. There we go. Okay, so now you can use your scissors or a thread cutter to clip these all apart. I like to just use the cutter on my machine. It works quickly. And then now, if you have like a little turning tool or a chopstick, that can be very helpful. All right, so I like to use this little turner and I just line this up right along the end of that seam and push through. And then it pokes that peak out just perfectly every time. Let me do that again. So I just line the point of this turner right up with the end of my seam and then flip it through. Just like so. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that to all of these and I'll meet you back here. All right, so I've got them all flipped. Now we just need to press them. So to do that, I like to just line up the middle seam. I just eyeball it and then I just hit it with my iron. Just like so. And I'll do this one as well. And then I have the rest of them pressed and ready to go. So now, one thing you wanna keep in mind when you're making these, if you're using alternating petals like I am here, you need to make all of them the same way. And so by that I mean, here I've got a few that I've already sewn together. Where are they? So you can see I put the dark blue on top. And if I were to put this under the machine this way, then when I went to put them together, I would end up with two whites together. And so you just wanna make sure that you make all of your sets and you sew them the same way. So let's go ahead and grab one of our blues and we wanna put those right sides together with the white. And I always start up here at the peak and begin sewing here because we're gonna cover this center part later. So if it doesn't match up exactly, that's not as important, but we want the top to match. So we're gonna start there. And I do like to do one little back stitch to hold that together. That's just my preference, you don't have to. And then we'll just zoom down the side and continue one after the other. This is what I mean once you get started with Dresden's, they're so much faster than I expected them to be. And we'll just do one more for good measure. Just like so. And then we can trim those apart and let's press those open. I always press to the dark side. There we go. And one more. And now we're just gonna start sewing these sets of two together. In order to make a half of one of these plates, you'll, make, you'll sew five sets of two together. So I have two more here and we will just add these together and then I'll meet you back here when it's done. All right, so I have sewn together five sets of two like you see here and I have half of my plate done. You can see how it makes this perfect half circle. I have another one ready to go. And so now we're just going to sandwich these together, right sides together, and sew straight down those last two seams. And then we will have a full completed Dresden plate which is what we're going for. Again, I'm making sure that those top edges line up. That's what I'm worried about. So I sew down this way, and then I flip it around and start from the top on the other side. There we go, look at that. Now we'll just press that so it lays nice and flat. 
lovely. And you'll just repeat that so that you have two for this little wall hanging, which is what I have here. So now let's move on to the leaves. In order to make the leaves, I just opened up my pack of five inch squares and let me go ahead and pull these out for you because they are so fun. And I just found sets of matching colors. So I found, you know, two purples that I liked and a couple of oranges. There's just so many fun prints in here. I love that red print. And you'll just pick, you need uh, five matching sets to make your leaves as you can see behind me. And I have some of these already made, but I went ahead and picked these orange ones here. And so we are just going to take our um, usable that we have here, and we're gonna iron this onto the back. So you're gonna cut five inch squares, and then we're just gonna press this down in place. Just like so, with a nice hot iron. There we go. Then we'll come back over here. And I've already ironed it on here. And you can see I traced the shape of the orange peel on this one. You don't actually have to trace it. You can just lay it on here and use your rotary cutter and cut right around that shape. There we go. And then around this side. It's a nice gentle curve, so just take your time. And you'll have no problem making that cut. And so you're just gonna repeat that with each of your sets. Oops, missed a little spot there. There we go. And turn it. Make sure you're not getting any fingers in the way as you're trimming these. There we go. And they will look just like that. And so I have the rest of them cut. And now we can get our background piece ready and we can start laying out all of our pieces. Oh, I almost forgot our centers. So for the centers of your Dresden, you're gonna do basically the exact same thing that we did with the orange peels. You're gonna cut out your five inch square. I had these scrap yellow uh, five inch squares that I just ironed them onto the back of. And I actually just used this little coaster that I had and it ends up being about a four inch circle. And so if you get the pattern, there is a template for that included, but just find something that works to cover the center and I think you'll be happy with it. And so I have one of these all ready to go and we can go ahead and iron this one down really quick because we need two centers. So we will just give that a quick press and then I will cut this one out with my scissors. There we go. This was one of those projects that I was just pleasantly surprised with how quick it all came together. There we go. Now I have both of those circles ready to go. I'm gonna move a little bit of this out of the way so we can get everything laid out on our background. Okay, so here is my background fabric. This measures 28 wide by 30 inches high. And I went ahead and put some press lines in here just to give me some guides. The ones that I'm really going to use are this center line and then I ironed the centers in half again so that I have these lines. And that's what I'm gonna kind of be using as I place all of my pieces to get them in the right spot. One more thing I do want to point out before we get too far, I have these little scraps that were left over from when I cut my five inch squares for all of these pieces. I'm actually going to iron these on just kind of randomly to the back of my Dresden blade. So let's go ahead and do that really quick. They don't have to be perfect. And after I pull the paper off, these are gonna be totally clear, but this is just gonna help hold this in place as I'm getting everything ready. And when I'm doing my blanket stitches, I don't wanna to have to fight with this later. So I'm just gonna put a few of these randomly on each one. You can see there's no real 
magic to this, but it is helpful. There we go. And one more. And then we'll do this other one as well. Just keep making my way around. more than I need, so I'll just set these other two aside, press these last few down. Perfect. All right, now we are ready. So as I start placing these, I do go ahead and peel off the paper from the back of my shapes, because I don't want to have to be fighting with those later. And they peel off so easily, as you can see. We just want to leave that adhesive on. There we go. And one more. And now I'm just kind of placing these for now. I'm not going to iron them down. I really enjoy doing applique projects. I just find them to be really freeing after piecing so many quilt uh, blocks one after the other. Sometimes it's, it's like grown up scissors and glue when you're working with applique shapes. So I'm just gonna sit these on here for now just to give me an idea. And I am lining up my, the points of my petals with those lines that I pressed on my background. And then now you can see our centers will just sit in like so. And now I'm just gonna start putting my petals in place. And I did line those up right with those lines. Just make my way down. Those are so fun. Such fun prints. There we go. Whoops, that's the same print of fabric, so I'm going to swap these around. Put this guy over here so they're not right next to each other. And then put these over here. I think that looks so fun. I just like how freeing it is, like I said. And so now you would either be working on your ironing board or we could put a few pins in here to hold these in place while we take them to the ironing board. I'm not gonna do that, I'm just gonna leave this here for now. And so the next step would be to hit all of this with the iron. Because this isn't all the way to the edge of my Dresden, this is just gonna hold this in place, hold all of my petals in place, and then I can come back with my ribbon or my craft text like I use. I can just slip that underneath the petal and run that the length of my project, like you see here, and I'll just trim that to fit. So I can go ahead and cut this one here, just like so, and do the same thing with this one, and just lay that under and trim this one off. These are cut at 3 quarters of an inch wide, so it doesn't require very much at all. And like I said, I just really wanted to experience with some experiment, excuse me, with something different. And I knew I was going to quilt this on my own machine at home and I could work around this thicker material and I thought it would be really fun to play with. So I just did a straight line seam down the center. You can dab a little bit of glue if you need to to hold that in place when you take it to the machine. And then once I did that and had everything ironed down, I just used a blanket stitch on all of the leaves, the petals, and the centers. So let's go ahead and look at the wall hanging and talk about how I finished it off. Okay, so here is my finished little Daisy Days wall hanging. As you can see, here is that line of stitching along the stem that I did down the craft text. I used white thread around all of my petals. It was really important to me that the daisy kind of just disappeared into the background, especially those blue petals. So I used blue matching thread all the way around the flower itself, and then I just came back and did some straight line quilting around the middle, around the outside of the flower, around each of the leaves, and then just one inch apart down the whole thing. And like I mentioned earlier, I pieced the backing, so these are just five inch squares sewn together on the back, 
and I just think it turned out so fun. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on the Daisy Days wall hanging, and I'll see you next time on At Home with Misty. Hey everyone, it's Misty. Thanks for watching At Home. If you aren't already a part of our Missouri Star family, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell if you want a notification every time we release a new video. I'll see you next Monday on the newest episode of At Home.